as the curve gets further and further inverted, that, that is typically going to be a headwind for growth, a headwind for lending, a headwind for profits. A head, and so it's a foreboding sign. And often the yield curve inversions are typically leading indicators for recession. And as we get further inverted, that likely means that that's where we're headed. This short clip is presented by Edge. Edge is our pro to pro advisory service, which is all about the macro with a focus on one to one engagement with the hedge fund manager, Craig Shapiro, economics advisor, Jeffrey Fouvry, and direct access to LaDuke Trading founder, Samantha LaDuke. For more information about Edge, visit www.laduketrading.com slash edge. Until we get some kind of QE, like we had a really nice deep inversion until the March 2023 backstop. And then we actually gapped higher. We went into a steepener. And that is the gap that I still see that we have left behind at that negative 0.60% level. So now that we're falling out of the wedge, that's right. exactly where I think it's going to go. What what What's the trade as it relates to the 10-year, for example? It, assuming we're gonna we're gonna more deeply invert, let's say we're at four eight right now, down to that 0.58. I think uh, the way that we would get there, I don't know, look two year look two year yields are so I guess it would have I guess from here it would be a bear flattener because I think two year yields are gonna go through five percent next week we get supply and then we get a good payrolls number and a good ISM number early June. No reason for me to believe that. I, I think five, I think two year yields can probably get back to maybe get back to the highs. And so mm -hmm. the highs of two years are five twenty five. Maybe they get to five fifteen, five twenty, and that drags up the ten year yield back to four seventy. And so you got five twenty by four seventy. That's your negative fifty basis points. What would you say? I got to get to negative sixty. Yeah. So five fifteen on twos and four sixty five on on tens. Because tens get where are tens now? Tens are four forty six. So that's twenty bips on. I get thirty bips on twos and twenty bips on tens. That gets me to that negative sixty. And at that point, mm -hmm. that point, at that, at that point, the 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 market stocks are going to are going to get hit. The economy is going to slow. We are going to get the data <laughs> is going to finally say this was a mistake. The Fed. The reality will be, I think, the Fed is going to push to basically max hawkish into this June meeting right as the economy is about to roll over already. And so I think that you're basically, although the survey data looks good, the survey data mm -hmm. reflects the stock market. Because when yeah. the stock market's up and you ask somebody how things are doing, they say, oh, things are better. And, and the services is, number this morning was, just, or yesterday just look, was But if you just look at the correlation of services ISM with the stock market on the, it, the the correlation is tight. So the reason that April sucked is because the stock market in April sucked. So when you ask people how the how it's doing, they're like, "Oh, well, stocks are down. Like my outlook looks bad." Now they're looking, stocks are good. So I think w because we've seen stocks and risk do very well in the month of May, when we get that number in the first week of June, it's going to look great because people are, people feel people are feeling good. Businesses are leaders are feeling good, but under the surface, the hard data is starting to deteriorate, like particularly the consumer facing stuff, some of the housing related stuff, the auto stuff, anything, you know, yield sensitive is starting to start to roll over. So I think that as the Fed is getting more hawkish, we're going to take out all the cuts for June. We're going to get two year yields up about 5%. We're going to further invert this curve. You're going to basically get a Fed that kind of says, okay, we're, we're here. We've arrived. We're stuck at no cuts. Mm -hmm. And then, then the economy, and then, then the economy is going to start to feel the bite of the lag impacts of monetary policy and it's going to start rolling over and the Fed's going to say, well, we got nothing we can do about it. Yep. We already told you we're not doing anything about it. We already did our tapering announcement. So you're not getting, you're going to, that that's, we're going to, we're, we're winding down our balance sheet. Like we said, for the next year, we're going to just going to keep doing 30, you know, whatever it is, 25 million a month of, of, of QT. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to get any positive surprise on, on the tapering front. And the, for a Fed that goes to basically max hawkish on the June meeting, it's ha the bar for them to move off that's going to be very high. Mm -hmm. And so- And they won't that, have consensus. And, and so it's going to just like, that seems like a very, very bad outcome. It's basically one of an economy that is finally being bitten by the long and, la and variable lags of monetary policy is starting to roll over but not swiftly enough to bring inflation down to 2%, forces the Fed on hold for longer. 
and yields are high, two-year yields above 5%. No, you're not getting any, any benefit you know, from yields moving lower. So PE multiples don't expand. And then you start to get earnings growth headwinds from these higher rates. That seems like a bad setup for risk. Yeah. And the sell in May and go away moment. So well, I'm not I'm not so convinced yet, even though it is May and even though we hit my 5340 SPX, because I have to I, I definitely this week, oh my God, that was dramatic. We hit it after NVIDIA, the print hit on Thursday, and then immediately turned tail intraday and had some very big volatility, very similar to April 4th, when we had that negative 2.7% drawdown from peak to trough intraday. And then we proceeded to roll down for the next three weeks, basically in April. This was right on cue, right? 53.40, and then woo, we had some big turbulence inside we had a reflexive bounce today, but inside yesterday, we definitely had a lot of breakdown in breadth and net volume for the first time in a, in a since the reflexive bounce started yeah. May 1st. What I wanted to highlight was that I don't know if we're going to get and stay above 5340, but if we do, it is very bullish. If, however, we chop lower into this June 12th FOMC, June 21st options expiration, June 30th QRA, that would be logical. But the market has not given me anyway some really, really strong signs that it's ready to stop, hold, and trend reverse. It is telling me that it's absolutely having a really hard time moving higher right now. That was that violence that I saw intraday yesterday at 5340 was literally a NVIDIA buy the news, <laughs> no, buy the rumor, sell the news event for the rest of the market. NVIDIA actually didn't sell off. It continued to hold really well. So the rest of the market's not so sure. The full episode is available to Edge Paid members. For more information, visit LaDukeTrading.com slash Edge.